Now this lesson focuses on the multiplication rules in probabilities. We use the addition rules when the two events are occurring at the same time. When the events occur in sequence, or one after the other, we must instead use multiplication rules. There are two multiplication rules depending on whether the events are dependent or independent of each other. Independent events do not influence each other. When you flip a coin twice, the result of the second toss does not depend whatsoever on the result of the first toss. But, if you choose to wear sandals over boots in December, this will greatly influence, or not, if you will get frostbites. Now, the multiplication rule for independent events states that the probability that event A will occur followed by event B is equal to the multiplication that the probability that A will occur by the probability that B will occur as well. Let's do an example of a multiplication rule for independent events. Imagine you have a box in which you have five white balls, two green balls, and three red balls. You're asked to pick a ball, note its color, and then put the ball back into the box. By replacing the ball into the box after it's been picked, you are ensuring that your event B will actually be independent from the first one. Why? Because you have exactly the same number of balls than when you actually picked your first one. So what would be your probability of picking one red ball and then one green ball? Here again is the multiplication rule for independent events. So event A would be picking one red ball. So you notice that you have three chances out of ten of picking a red ball. Now replace that red ball into the blue box and check out what your probability of picking a green ball would actually be. Well, you have two green balls out of ten possible balls, so all you have to do is multiply three out of ten by two out of ten, which gives you six out of one hundred. Simplify that, so you have a three out of fifty probability of picking a red ball and then a green ball. This is the multiplication rule for dependent events. So again, you have the probability that event A will occur followed by event B. You have the probability that event A will occur multiplied, now here's a little difference, by the probability that event B will occur after event A has already occurred. That's what the vertical bar stands for. It does not mean divide B by A. This is also known as the conditional probability. Let's do an example where we would use the multiplication rule for dependent events. Suppose you draw a card from a deck of cards and then you do not replace it into the deck of cards. What is your probability of picking a 10 on the first card and then a jack on the second card? Since you're not replacing the card in the deck, this influences the odds for your second draw. Now event A would be picking a 10, so you do have 4 out of 52 chances of picking a 10 out of your deck of cards. Now since you do not put that card back into your deck of cards, you now have only 51 cards into your deck of cards. So event B, after A has occurred, you have 4 chances out of 51 of actually picking out a jack from your pack of cards. Again, you multiply these two probabilities together and it gives you your probability for both events. So 4 out of 52 times 4 out of 51 is equal to 16 out of 2,652. Let's simplify that and it comes down to 4 out of 663. Now what would be the probability of picking two jacks in a row, no matter the suit, without replacing the card after it's been picked? Well, our first jack, we still have 52 cards into the deck of cards, and we have 4 jacks into our deck, so that's 4 out of 52. Now, event B would be picking the second jack. Remember, we have not put the card back into the pack of cards, which means we now have only 51 cards, and we've already got one jack that's been picked out of the deck of cards, which means we only have three jacks remaining. So 
So multiply 4 out of 52 by 3 out of 51, and you have a probability of 12 out of 2,652. Simplified, it gives us 3 out of 663. We can also use tree diagrams again to determine probabilities for sequential events, or events that occur one after the other. Now, imagine that you have to flip a coin in order to determine from which of these two boxes you will pick out a ball. Now, we're looking for the probability of picking a red ball. Now, well, first to determine from which of the boxes we're going to pick a ball, we have to toss a coin. So, we have a 1 out of 2 probability of picking from either box. Now in box 1, we have 2 out of 3 probability of picking a red ball, and in box 2, we have a 1 out of 4 probability of picking a red ball. Now, to find the probability of our sequence of events, we have to multiply the probability of each event together. So, in the case of the first line, picking a red ball out of box 1, we multiply 1 out of 2 by 2 out of 3, which gives us 2 out of 6, and we do the same thing for each of the possible sequences. Now, since we can pick a red ball from box 1 and box 2, we then use the addition rule to find our total probability. So, we add 2 out of 6 to 1 out of 8, which gives us 11 out of 24 probabilities of actually picking a red ball. Now, is it possible to find the probability of events B happening if we only have the probability of both events occurring and the probability that event A occurs? But of course, all we have to do is divide both sides of our multiplication rule by the probability of A occurring. As you can see here, on the right-hand side of the equation, probability of A annuls itself. So what you're left with is the probability of A and B occurring divided by the probability of event A, which is equal to the probability of event B occurring. Let's do an example of this. Coming late into bishops in the morning, your probability of having to park illegally is 0.2, and your probability of having to park and getting a ticket is 0 0.06. So what's the probability of you getting a ticket if you're actually parked illegally? Now, we have the probability of both events, and we have the probability of event A, which is parking illegally. So divide 0 0.06 by 0 0.2 gives you a probability of getting a ticket of 0 0.3. With the exception of our last example, we were always using examples where all outcomes have the same probability of occurring, classical probability, which rarely occurs. So we have to go into empirical probability, where the results rely on actual experience. Consider this example. Bishops. This would be the number of students in each of the degrees. Notice they're not equally distributed. We have more students in business than in math. So what would be our probability of actually encountering someone in a quad that's doing a, a degree in math? Well, the first thing we have to do is add up together all of the frequencies. So do a summation, which gives us a total of 1564 students. Now, what we have here is a frequency distribution. So, the count of the occurrence of students for each category's degree. Now, second bit, remember what we want to do is calculate the probability of stopping a student in the quad that's doing a degree in math. We know that we have the frequency for the class, math, divided by the total frequencies of the distribution gives us the probability of that event. So, we can simplify that by writing f divided by n. Now, f divided by n here is 21. We have 21 students in mathematics divided by the total number of students, 1564, gives us the probability 0 0.013, means that we have a probability of 1.3% of actually stopping a student randomly in the quad and him doing a mathematical degree. So that's it for today.